How do you anticipate these various approaches to building on Bitcoin as outlined in the report, um, sort of playing into the long-term minor incentives for Bitcoin? And yeah, what factors are, are important for Bitcoin long? Yeah, I think, I think the, the Bitcoin minor in, incentives are a very, very important topic. And uh, th if you look at the industry right now, basically in one camp, you have the Bitcoin hardliners who effectively try to argue that this is not an issue, right? Like Bitcoin has been working just fine for a while. The, even the transaction fees, maybe the, the transaction fees are a very small percent of the mining, uh, mining rewards right now. So most of it is the, uh, the Coinbase rewards, the newly minted Bitcoin that come out, that is like north of like 95% of the, of the total rewards. So Bitcoin basically runs on this, this uh, uh, almost like the newly minted coins that are coming out and not the transaction fees. And that's the biggest uh, almost like criticism or attack that you will notice uh, people outside of Bitcoin, for example, in the Ethereum ecosystem, that they would bring up this point and basically say that Bitcoin would either have to change the 21 million uh, supply uh, or kind of like, you know, the security budget is going to be so low that it's not going to survive. And people in the Bitcoin world kind of know that Bitcoin is never going to change the 21 million supply. Like that's kind of like a really big value prop that you know what the, what the supply is. It's never going to change. It's hard money. So they're effectively kind of like saying that Bitcoin only works until you have the the, uh, the the Coinbase rewards coming out. And when they stop, uh, it's unclear what's, what's going to happen. So I think I'm the reality sometimes is always somewhere in the middle, right? And, and that's my point of view as well. I do think there are some arguments that as transaction fees become more, uh, more frequent or higher, like especially in dollar terms. So if the Bitcoin price basically just, just keeps appreciating, the dollar value of the transaction, total total amount of transaction fees is going to, to become more significant. And at the same time, um, I think when people say that this is a problem that we wouldn't see for like a hundred years, that's also kind of like not correct because it's, it's, it's a couple of decades really before the Coinbase rewards actually become so small that it, at that point it, it has to be the transaction fees. Right. So this is an opportunity for Bitcoin layers, I think. I think the most practical solution here by far is that instead of thinking about, you know, changing Bitcoin supply, uh, which, you know, some people publicly talk about it, and I, I personally don't think that that's ever going to happen. You can have new incentives uh, as Bitcoin layers, like Saks already does that, right? So there are incentives uh, for, for new actors, which are Saks miners, to basically pay high transaction fees at the, at the Bitcoin layer, right? Similarly, a bunch of applications uh, using the Stacks layer uh, would just result in more transactions on the Bitcoin side. If you look at Zest, it's a lending protocol. If uh, decentralized lending protocol, so if you're a user of Zest, you're actually sending Bitcoin transactions to participate. Same with like native swaps that, that are live. If you're swapping BTC to a stable coin, and that just looks like a transaction on the Bitcoin chain, instead of doing that trade on Binance or some other centralized exchange, that's actually sending more revenue to Bitcoin miners. And I think all these things are super important, super healthy for the long-term success of Bitcoin when the Coinbase rewards go down. So I, I disagree with, with uh, kind of like this notion that there's no clear path out of this, this choice that Bitcoin would have to make, like either change the supply or kind of like you don't have enough incentive. I think Bitcoin layers provide a very clear path uh, that, that it is kind of like already happening like today in, in 2022. So in a couple of decades, I think such uh, incentives could actually add up to a lot more where people can just clearly see. And I think, again, linking this back to the earlier discussion about better tracking these metrics, like I can easily imagine you know, uh, that if you just display, like here are the amount of transactions that are already happening on the Bitcoin main chain because of the stacks layer or because of these applications that are built, like then, then people can start, you know, looking at the data that, oh, look, you know, there are these new types of incentives and they're working. Uh, more, more fees are, are going to Bitcoin miners even today. All right.
Well, thank you, Mani, for being here. And thanks to everyone for tuning into Stacker Chats. Um, please make sure to like this video, subscribe for more content like this, um, and let us know you, if you have any questions either in the comments below or on Twitter. And we'll see everyone soon. All right, thank you.